subtopic number three, which is the final subtopic, which is on projectile motion. So on projectile motion, you have to be able to describe what uh, describe the projectile mo projectile motion when it is launched at an angle theta as well as when theta is equal to 90 degree. And lastly, you have to be able to solve problems related to projectile motion. Lah. So what is projectile? So projectile is defined as a form of motion experienced by an object or particle that is thrown near the Earth's surface and moves along a curved path under the action of gravity only. So path of the motion is a parabolic arch and there are three cases. Uh, note that theta is always measured from the horizontal axis. Okay, it is never measured from the vertical axis. So now, uh, the, uh, the general case is when it is launched at an angle theta. So it can either be 60, 30, 20, berapa berapa aja pun lah boleh. Okay, and then it can also be when it is launched horizontally, which is theta equal to 0 degree. Uh, another special case is when it is launched vertically ataupun it is dropped where theta is equal to 90 degree. This is what we call free fall lah. Okay, this one, this is free fall. So as the object moves upwards or downwards, note that it is also moving horizontally. So you will understand this at the next page. Lah. So remember that there are always two components of the projectile motion. So there's always an x-axis and y-axis. So uh, the forces at the x-axis, it uh, is it present? No, it's not present. Uh, it is only present at the y-axis okay so it is under the action of gravity so it is always going downwards the acceleration on the x-axis no there is no acceleration at for the y-axis yes there is an acceleration and it is moving downward which is the negative gravitational acceleration uh, for the velocity pula, uh, the velocity at the x-axis is constant whereas for the y-axis it is changing by 9.8 meter per second each second okay okay so let's look at the first case where it is launched at an angle so if you look at the velocity at the x-axis which is this one it is always constant okay so the initial velocity at the x component will always be equal uh will always be equal for the horizontal axis okay so the projectile never speeds up or slows down in the x direction okay and then uh, at every location during vertical motion the acceleration is always always negative 9.81 meter per second okay so it is always negative now that's ugly and then um due to the gravity which acts downwards the velocity at the y component where is it uh the y component changes lah untuk the velocity at the y component it changes as you look at this point here it is going up and then at this point here it is going down so it slows down and then as it rises it speed up as it falls lah okay as it falls as it falls here it will speed up if you look at this point at this point v remember that v y at this point is equal to zero this is at maximum height okay so this is the terms used to describe the motion lah. next oh, ada pula the sini. okay so this is the maximum height so it is the characteristic of the vertical part of the motion so remember when it reaches its maximum height the velocity will be equal to zero at the y component will be equal to zero remember the x component is not equal to zero lah okay it is always equal to the initial velocity of the x, um, x component all right all right next we have the range r atopun we can call this as the displacement at the x axis it is the horizontal distance traveled between launching and landing, assuming that the projectile returns to the same vertical level. Lah. Assuming it returns, ay, assuming it returns at this level also. Gitu lah maksudnya. Okay, so remember the maximum range result when theta 
is equal to 45 degree lah okay so if it is launched at this uh, sorry at this value it won't achieve its maximum range okay so maximum range <coughs> will only be achieved at the angle of 45 degree when it is launched at an angle of 45 degree okay all right next Note that there are two separate sets of equations for modeling projectile motion. Lah. So we have equations for the x-axis and y-axis. So remember x and y component here do not talk to each other. So what's happening in this x-axis here does not mean that it is also happening in the y-axis. What I'm saying is, if you look at the acceleration at the x-axis, it is equal to zero. However, it does not mean that the acceleration at the y-axis is also equal to zero okay so they do not talk to each other they are not the same so the only variable that is constant for both component is time okay time saja yang akan sama and then lastly you have to remember to include the direction whether it is going upwards or downwards okay and the angle theta is always measured from the horizontal axis lah macam kamu tengok sini okay all right so this is the um the apa the equation that you need to know in order for you to solve the problem okay so usually uh what i would tell my students to do is try to write down all of this equation when they are trying to solve it so that they can see what information is available what information is not available example five a tennis ball is thrown upwards from the top of a building with a velocity of 15 meter per second at an angle 30 degree to the horizontal so the height of the building is 40 meter we have to calculate the maximum height maximum height and the magnitude of the velocity of the ball just before it strikes the ground so let me just draw the uh, building so this is the building and then there is a ball here this is the velocity and then this is the angle so remember we have vx ux uy and ux okay so this is the distance of displacement at y component so this is sy this is the parabolic path lah kalila begitu ha boleh lah okay segitu je okay so we only need to find this distance here in order for us to find the maximum height lah. okay so this is the maximum height this is what we are trying to look for okay so sy is equal to 40 meter and this is u this is ux this is uy so first ux is equal to u cos cosine 30 degree uy is u sine 30 degree okay so we have to look for h here so that value of h we can use v square equal to u square plus 2as so we are going to use the y component because this value of h is at the y component okay so what we can do is we can let v let v wait i'm just going to change it to vy ya sebab kita akan guna untuk the y component minus 2gsy where sy is equal to no i'm gonna write it as not s lah sebab kita mau h okay so that is for h uh at maximum height v is equal to zero Okay, so now we are going to look for that value. So that is going to be equal to 0. Initial velocity at the x com a y component is going to be 15 sine 30 degree minus 2. G is 9.81. H is what we are looking for. 
so h is gonna be equal to 2.87 meter okay so why is it only uh, why can we use this equation because we are looking at this point here where v is equal to zero v at x y component okay so from there we can then just calculate the maximum height to be sy plus h which is equal to 42.9 meter okay all right first two we have to oh let me just put them tadi miss buat tapi terblur pula okay now we can do for the magnitude just before it strikes the ground so this is the ball again this is the velocity okay remember just before it strikes the ground pun there are another velocity okay jangan directly say that uh, state that v is equal to zero lah dia tanya just before it strikes the ground so this is our sy okay so this is sy this is u ux uy okay so this is vy this is v this is vx and this is our theta Okay, so we are looking for this value of V. Okay, so how do we do that is we are going to find for X and Y component. So for the X component, we already have VX, which is equal to UX, which is equal to U cosine 30 degree. So this is equal to 13 meter per second. Now we are going to use we are going to find for the y component so for the y component vy is equal to we are going to use this equation lah, minus 2gsy okay so the sy that we are talking about is going to be negative so why is it going to be negative because this is our initial point so anything that goes eh, sorry Anything that goes below the initial point will be negative. Okay, so if it is going up from the initial point, it will be positive. Okay, so please remember that. So anything that goes up will be positive. Anything that goes down from the initial point will be negative. Okay, so uh, let's just substitute the value. So this is Vy square ui is equal to 15 sine 30 degree tadi kan minus 2 negative oh no need negative so sebab sudah tukar negative terus 29.81 sy is negative 40 okay so this is gonna be equal to 29 meter per second okay so that's not the end of it. We have to find the resultant value. So that is Vx square plus Vy square. So that's going to give you 31.8 meter per second. Okay. After that, you need to calculate the... Oh, they tanya apa? Magnitude coba kan? Oh, sorry. They tanya magnitude of the velocity saja. So we can just end it here lah. Alright. Okay, so that is example 5. Let's look at the second case, which is where it is launched at an angle of zero degree. Okay, so it is launched at an angle zero degree. This is uh, Let me just find the the solution for this. Um, okay, this one. So example six. Oh, sorry. Good job. Belum lagi explain. So when an when a particle is launched at an angle of zero degree, the horizontal component along the path AB is gonna be constant. Okay, again, horizontal component is usually memang selalu constant. So for the vertical component, pula, for the vertical component, the since it is launched horizontally, there is no y component. So initial velocity at the y component is equal to zero, and then since it is going down from the initial point, the 
uh, displacement at the y component will be negative h. Alright? Okay, so now, uh, let's look at example 6. A transport plane traveling at a constant velocity of 50 meter per second at an altitude of 300 meter. Okay, so at an altitude of 300 meter releases a parcel when directly above a point x on level ground. Okay, so that is going to be negative 300 so but they are can go down from the initial point so we have to calculate the flight time of the parcel the velocity of impact of the parcel the distance from x to the point of impact okay so if we were to draw this there is a there is an aeroplane okay so there's an aeroplane here and then there's a parcel the democracy jatu and then this is the distance 300 meter and then there is there is a to this inila okay so this is x this is 300 meter and then it is moving uh, at a constant velocity of 50 meter per second okay so the parabolic arch is something like this lah. okay so we are asked to calculate the flight time the velocity of impact as well as the distance from x to the point of impact okay so i'm just gonna label this as sx lah. okay okay so the puzzle's velocity should be equal to the plane's velocity lah, so but the, the the one that's carrying the puzzle is the plane so what do we know is ux is going to be equal to u which is equal to 50 meter per second okay and we know that the initial velocity at the y component is equal to zero okay so the vertical displacement is given by negative 300 meter huh? i've mentioned that here so why is it negative because this is the initial point anything that goes below the initial point goes down from the initial point will be negative if it's going up then this one is positive right okay so now how do we do this is we are going to use the equation s y u y t minus half g t square okay so why am i using the y component is because we only have information at the y component not the x component okay so from here we can then calculate the time so this is zero so the time is equal to 7.82 seconds right so that is the flight time of the parcel and then the velocity of impact of the parcel is uh, for example at this point so we have to find vx sorry vy V, v and Vx lah. So we have to find Vx, Vy Baru boleh cari the resultant So this is Vx, this is Vy This is V Okay, so we've already Obtained the value of Vx Which is equal to Ux So that is equal to 50 meter per Second And then now we have to find for the vertical component So for the vertical component What we can use is We can use this equation so why can we use this equation is because we already have the time of flight of the parcel so we can just uh, substitute that into here to obtain the parcel punya uh, velocity at the vertical component lah. minus 9.81 t is 7.82 so this is equal to negative 76.7 meter per second so now the resultant vector is equal to vx square plus vy square so this is equal to 50 square plus 76.7 square which gives you v to be equal to 91.6 meter per second okay so it asks us to find the velocity of impact it didn't mention the magnitude only so we have to calculate the direction as well lah. so that is shift tangent shift tangent vy over vx so that will give you 56.9 degree so the vy is at the negative component if we were to draw this vy is negative 
so the resultant vector is here so this is below the positive x axis okay all right so that is example six okay now the third case pula it is when it is launched at an angle of 90 degree so this is where the horizontal component does not exist in this case study the vertical component yang equal to zero untuk initial sorry so the vertical component for this motion is under the sole influence of gravity so gravity sejak yang buat dia jatuh begitulah okay so this motion is known as free fall lah okay so Oh, I forgot to cast cantik ni table. It's okay. So for this one, the acceleration, uh, what we will only be focusing on is the y component. Okay, so we will not look at the horizontal component. We only look at the vertical component. Okay, so um, uh, directly lah to the application. Okay, example seven. A ball is thrown straight upwards with an initial velocity of fifteen meter per second from the roof of a building which is 40 meter high uh, so we have to calculate the maximum height the time taken for the ball to return to the original level the time taken for the ball to strike the ground if it misses the edge of the roof what why is it rude roof sorry it's supposed to be roof uh, and the velocity of the ball just before it strikes the ground okay so let me just draw the uh, the building lah. So this is the building. Okay. okay, so there's this ball at the edge of the roof. So it is thrown straight upwards at a velocity of 15 meter per second. Okay, so if you were to throw a ball like this, the it will move something like this okay it will go down with that type of direction okay motion ataupun parabolic path okay it will go through this path so we are we already know the height of this building which is equal to 40 meter okay so this is sy 40 meter so we only need to find this value lagi so where we can find the maximum height so i'll label this as h so this is the maximum height okay so that is capital h so the maximum height of the ball at maximum height we know that the velocity will be equal to zero and what we can do is we can let s y to be equal to h so we can directly use this equation v square u square minus 2 g s uh, so s is gonna be equal to h lah uh, kita tulis y okay so at this point it will be equal to zero so the initial velocity at the y component is equal to 15 square minus 29.81 h so h is equal to 11.5 meter so the maximum height is sy plus h which is equal to 51.5 meter okay and then the time taken for the ball just to return to the original level which is at this point here um okay so at in order for it to reach to this original level we will let s y to be equal to zero lah sebab they reach just right at the original level okay so remember at the original level s here is equal to zero ah, and then anything that goes down here will be negative goes up here will be positive value okay so now we can use s equal to ut minus half gt square y okay so this one's gonna be equal to 0 15 t minus half 9.81 t square so t will be equal to 3.06 second okay all right question c pula the time taken for the ball 
to strike the ground if it misses the edge of the roof. Uh, so that is from this point here up till the ground. Okay, so up till the ground. So that is going to be from the initial point, from the initial point to the ground. So the SY, the displacement at the Y component is going to be 40 meter, but it will be negative because it is going down. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. So that is going to be S negative 40 meter. And then we will be using SY UT minus half GT squared. Okay, so that is negative 40, ui is 15 half 9.81 t square. So you will then get t to be equal to, oh sorry, let me just do it this way. So you will uh, come up with, I mean you will get a quadratic equation. So you can just use your calculator to solve this. And remember, time do not have a negative value, so pick the positive value. So 4.77 second lah, jawapan dia. Okay, so always choose the positive value untuk time. Okay, next, uh, the velocity of the ball just before it strikes the ground. The velocity of the ball just before it strikes the ground is just Vy, Uy minus Gt lah. Okay, so remember, if it's striking the ground, the only component it has is the y component, vy. Okay. Okay, so that is 0 minus, eh, sorry, not 0, uy lah. So five, 15 minus 9.81, t is equal to 4.77. So you will get 31.8 meter per second. Okay, so the ball's velocity is 31.8 meter per second moving downwards okay so this value negative value this negative here is telling us the direction of the velocity okay all right so that's the end of our chapter two